Hey, hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you on a drive through to Edinburgh and we're going to go across the Forth Road Bridge. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be talking about the fuel prices that you're seeing in the forecast just now and how we can also save some money on fuel, making our cars more fuel effective and our journeys more cost effective. So what I'm going to be talking about uh, first away is talk about your tyres. Of course, we can all uh, pressurize our tires correctly, but this takes time. And if you're using one of these uh, little small machines from Tesco's, uh, you're going to really hate doing the job because it's cold out there. You can see it's raining and a little bit of snow going on. But uh, using one of those machines will take a wee while to actually uh, get them uh, to the correct tire pressure. So what I'm going to recommend for you is to use a better quality faster a automatic pump one that preferably is battery operated so you're not having to carry a wire around with you so the one that uh, i've seen is the makita and that one's very powerful it's a makita lxt very powerful uh compressor you get them for debolts as well if you got one of these battery drills so using the battery uh, power packs of these uh, drills to actually connect onto these uh, compressors and they're very very fast so that's the first thing make sure your tires at the correct pressure the next thing you want to do is also make sure that the tires are not fighting each other on the road. So if your tires haven't been uh, tracked or aligned for a long time, then this is something that you want to get done. So alignment is just making sure that the tires are pointing, the wheels are pointing straight ahead and not pointing towards each other because each rotation will put additional wear and will fight the, the other tire and that's going to increase the fuel consumption. Whilst we're there, when you're looking at the tires before you get them aligned, look at the video I, I made in alignment. But effectively, what I'm saying to you is make sure that all the tires are in good condition. Uh, and if you are going to replace them, uh, if they all need to be replaced, replace them before you get the alignment because your tires will be aligned uh, just so your alignment for the vehicle will be to those tires. Okay, so a good set of tires definitely required for the alignment. So we're also looking at the external of the vehicle as well. And if you've got roof boxes like I have, uh, then you've got to also roof bars, which are, are supplemental to the to the rails that we, we normally have in vehicles. These, ideally, if they're not being used, take them off, put them, on, put them in storage because they will take up um, an unnecessary amount of uh, weight. You've also got the unnecessary resistance. And all this will actually add up on your fuels. You just won't realize it because you're budgeted for it. But now one pound 60 a liter, you don't want to be budgeting for that. So what, what exactly does one pound 60 a liter sound like? Well, it depends. If you're used to working gallons, then that's 4.54 liters per gallon. So one pound 60 roughly equates to about seven, seven pounds 50 or so. Okay, now that's a lot for a gallon. It used to be a pound a gallon. So you're looking at four pounds 50. It's quite a big jump. Uh, in, in a year or a year and a half. That's a big jump. So what we want to do is make sure that we're getting our maximum value for that. So let's look at a, a simple thing we can do is when we when we uh, start the car, your uh, engine is cold. It's very inefficient at that point. So it takes up more fuel to make sure it doesn't stall uh, because it's got, because the unknown condition it starts off with. So one thing we can actually do is park our cars facing outwards. So that's basically reverse into your space. Um, rather than actually, look at that, see there's going to be potential snow there, I believe. But a, so reverse into your into your driveway, and that means when you're driving, when you're leaving, you can leave and get your car up to speed quite quickly. Some people say that uh, you shouldn't, you should drive slowly until your engine oil warms up. Uh, but I think the consensus is just to start the car, drive off, don't let it warm up, just drive off. Um, now, so going back to that, okay, so basically you're going to, Park your car facing outwards so you can drive off straight away. That means that you're not having to look behind you and reverse slowly. That's going to save you some fuel. The next thing you want to do is also look to make sure your maintenance of your vehicle is good. So cars do do need maintenance. You know, this means that you're going to have to make sure that the, the cars are in good condition. Make sure the spark plugs, the engineer checks your spark plugs, replaces them, replaces them when necessary. Also check your oil to make sure that's getting replaced um, as well. And uh, your, you might as well check your uh, your um, coolant as well. So using the right oil really makes a big difference. You can use thinner oils, which are more fuel efficient, uh, but you've also got an increase in engine wear. So one of the things you don't want to do is to is to create another problem by trying to save some money. Okay, so go with the oil 
I think for this particular vehicle, it's 5W30, which is the Toyota Alpha. Um, you don't want to go to the 020s or anything like that unless you're in, 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 a, in a different climate from Scotland. Okay, then you can consider it. So the other thing you're going to be looking at is Oh, sorry, we talked about uh, mileage. So this this uh, big vehicle does about Alpha does about twenty six miles to the to the gallon or twenty three miles per gallon. If I'm not really paying attention, um, let's say a Boxster will do uh, approximately seventeen to eighteen miles to the gallon, um, and the Toyota sorry Toyota Nissan uh, Qashqai uh, one point six petrol. Uh, J10 will do about 26 miles. So these are not big figures. These are not big uh, figures. We get into the 40 and 50. That's partially because the cars are old. But let's look at the, the the actual cost of running a car. And actually, fuel is just a small component of it. Relatively small component. The biggest component being depreciation. So even if you've got a car which is doing 26 miles to the gallon uh, relative to the 40 uh, plus miles per gallon you're getting now, You've also got depreciation of a new car, which is about 30, 20 to 30 uh, percent on the when you take out the the sales room. It's decreased now because we're we're a little bit short of uh, semiconductors, etc. But generally speaking, that's what you want to. That's the kind of thing you want to actually avoid. Um, now the other thing that uh, to to look at is gearbox oil. So if the gearbox oil hasn't been changed, and the gearbox is in good condition. And uh, the cars are relatively uh, young. Gearbox oil uh, is not a bad place to be uh, looking at. So that again will keep the transmission nice and smooth. It will decrease transmission wear as well, and uh, that's going to make a difference to your your running cost too. So another thing you can be looking at is where you get your fuel from. So different types of fuels you can be using the five percent and ten percent. Uh, a lot of the older cars, you're going to be running on 10%. Performance cars running on 10%. Uh, with the newer, uh, newer cars, may run on 5% quite effectively. I'm actually just started on the fourth road bridge here. You can see the actual main stem uh, just there ahead of us with all the cables attached onto it. So this is the, the fourth road bridge or the new fourth road bridge called the Queensferry Crossing, if I get it correctly. But look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's been open about maybe 10, 10 years or something. Um, and uh, that's what it looks like. Isn't that quite amazing? So we're going to go across this bridge and a, the views. You know, if I, if I had a passenger, I'd be showing you more views. Anyway, back to back to the, the, the how to save fuel. So we stripped off all the roof boxes. We're, we're, we're driving outwards, we're reversing into spaces. We're doing all that. Uh, we've changed the oil. Uh, we've changed the. We're making sure the engine's up to date uh, with with uh, with its maintenance. We've checked the tires and we're making sure the tires aren't fighting each other. So the other thing we can do is drive better. So as you can see here, I'm driving at a fairly consistent speed. I've got my uh, people in front of me, and I can see where they are. I'm consistent. So I mean, they're not using the braking, etc., to actually uh, accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake. Just taking my time, relaxing. It's going to get me to the journey within time easily. Stick to the speed limit. So the next thing you're going to be looking at is also the type of fuels. Where do you get the fuel from? Does it make a difference if you buy from uh, from one fork or another? Well, there will be differences between the two. They all have to have a, a basic uh, a basic um, standard, which they, they must apply, government standard. However, there will be differences in detergents um, and also the explosiveness of the, of the different fuels. However, uh, what is important is to consider purchasing your fuel from the one place. Now, the reason for that is because the cars have uh, electronic brains and they adjust their they adjust their uh, their combustion process depending on what the fuel type is. So, if you're switching from E5 to E10 or E10 from one shop to another shop, another forecourt, then there will be a period of time where the vehicle is inefficient, but it takes time to actually learn. Uh, what the what the new fuel is and what it can do to actually make it much more efficient. So that's something to be thinking about. But at the other end, uh, you do want to be driving. Uh, if you're if you're going past the fuel station, then you know what it might be an idea just to buy there, uh, because as I said, the uh, rough cost per mile at twenty three miles per gallon is about thirty p per mile, and you don't want to be driving ten miles 
and costing yourself three pounds just to um, save some uh, fuel. It's actually not good for the environment as well. Another way of uh, looking at uh, things also is how many passengers have you got in the car. If you've got only uh, yourself, then you know that's that's a very efficient way of driving. If you've got two, three, four people, then the efficiency goes up. Of course, you won't get the money back from. Uh, you can't just charge your passengers. Uh, it's just be not the right thing to do. But you are saving the planet. You are saving money overall as as a group. Okay, so that's something you can also look at doing is planning your journeys much much more effectively, um, and uh, deciding right uh, how can we all go at the same time. You can see the roads are fairly clear here. Now the roads are fairly clear because I'm travelling here at about what uh, uh, two p.m. on a, on a Sunday morning, a Sunday afternoon. Completely clear roads, and this is the kind of traffic you want to be uh, travelling in. So plan your journeys effectively. So don't try and don't uh, avoid rush hour. Avoid a rush hour when you can. Try and do much more of the other bits and pieces around your office or in your house that can that can be done there. And, and then leave at a slightly different time. If you do this consistently, you'll save money and you'll also save time on your actual journey as well. You won't be stuck in traffic. Though I think we talked about uh, um, other things that sap up power, and one of those things is the battery. So a battery, although it supplies all the, the electrics, etc., is charged by the alternator. So it takes energy, and that energy comes from the engine. So if you've got a weak battery, you've got a dying battery, then it's going to start costing you money. If you're leaving your fog lights and your headlights on during the daytime, it's going to cost money because this is the energy which needs to be paid back to the battery. And that comes from the, the alternator, which is uh, the, the, the component within the engine which supplies a charge or a current to the battery. If you've got a weak battery or a battery which is dying or dead cells, then that's going to cost you money because it will not be able to, to take the charge as easily as, as a good condition battery. Also, it will lose charge as well. Look at the way you do your shopping as well. If you're traveling to, let's say, a shop, let's say a Sainsbury's, which is a standalone Sainsbury's, and then you have to go to the Timpsons, and then you have to go to a DIY store, then this is going to cost money. So you might be saving money at going to, to Sainsbury's, but going to the, each individual store's, <coughs> you may find yourself losing some cash there. The more expensive component is the transport costs in this case. I'm really rattling through these uh, cost saving tips um, very, very quickly. So I do hope that uh, you can keep up. You may have to watch this video again. So we're looking at shopping as being one of the main components of our journeys, as well as traveling to work. So traveling to work, try and, try and get as much done, maybe extend your hours a little bit more uh, so that you can take some time off or travel within the the less uh, busier times. The other thing you also want to look at is, say, if you're going to the gym. Now, that's a, that's an interesting one. Say your gym costs you £12 because you're going to a pure gym, but you're traveling 10 miles. That is adding on, theoretically, a £3 uh, journey uh, onto it. So that's five miles there, five miles back. That's going to cost you £3 each time. So if you're going to the gym, say, uh, let's say, uh, 10 times a month that's an additional 30 so try and try and have we think think slightly differently don't think just cheapest item think about cheapest item and less traveling together item and that will lead you to conclusion that you should also be looking at maybe doing your shopping online as well your grocery shopping getting efficient at that because that means yes you're stuck in the house while you're waiting for the delivery but again you're not using uh, fuel which you can avoid using um, the other thing also is for the big shops as well so you're going to buy something from from Argos like a space heater etc and then again try and order that and try and get delivered to you because that will be somebody else's fuel uh, and not your fuel coming in so I've talked about uh, quite a lot of different ways to actually save money and and to make your make your journeys more efficient avoid journeys we talked about putting passengers in we talked about um, about uh, driving off with the car facing forward. We talked about uh, planning our journeys, making sure we're not using our brake and accelerator as much as we can do. Look at this journey here. Look at that. It's just nice, clear road. Uh, and that means that you're not having to stop start. Stuff like that all makes a big difference when it comes to actually the fuel economy. If you look at the, if you look at your trip meters, etc., and use just use that as a judge, a rough judge, then you will see that uh, you're saving. The, how you can save uh, just by by planning 
the the lack of use of that brake. Now, one of the other things actually is reducing the weight of the vehicle. So taking away all the extra extra junk. If you don't have a spare wheel in your car, if you remove the spare wheel, say for an LPG tank, as in this case, then make sure you discard that. Uh, that jack because you're not going to be using it you're not going to be using it to change your tire so get rid of these little bits and pieces that you don't require uh, in your vehicle and when you're filling up with petrol don't fill right to the top i tend to to have filled right to the top just put a tank in there forget about it but now i just use a quarter tank and the rest is the lpg on this particular vehicle and the other vehicles again i'm using a third of a tank um and and just running it on that the danger of doing that is is basically if you're when you're running running low on the fuel, then you don't want to be hitting any speed bumps, etc. Speed because that's going to basically knock up the, the the fuel into the air. It's going to come down with all the crud and suck it up into your into your fuel filter and then cause havoc with your uh, with your ignition. Okay, so as I said, reduce the the weight of the vehicle if you can do. Try and carry as little in the vehicle as possible. So hopefully I've given you quite a lot of things to actually think about. You can see that we're actually on the way back. And as I said, this is Edinburgh, just the outskirts of Edinburgh. But what, what a journey that's been, hasn't it? I hope you've really enjoyed looking at the the trees, the skyline. Yes, it's a wet day, but Scotland is an amazing place to actually uh, visit if you like uh, greenery and, and scenery and, and engineering. Um, so back to back to the subject again. I hope you've actually enjoyed this uh, this video. I really hope it's actually been useful to you. Take some time, as I said, you can pick which tips you want to use. Some of you will disagree with some tips. Uh, rather than arguing it with me, don't take those tips. Work on the other ones. I'm quite sure that everybody can take something um, from this. And if you've got any, if you've got any uh, uh, tips that you can actually give, pop them in the comments of this YouTube video because I really want to hear from them. And uh, we can we can all learn uh, from each other on, on this. The, as I said, uh, vehicles are, are purchased for pleasure. This vehicle's a pleasure vehicle. I mean, the Porsche is a pleasure vehicle. The Qashqai is a very functional vehicle. But whatever vehicle you have, you know, you don't go, don't hide behind the idea of you're going to ignore fuel, etc. Because you can still enjoy a vehicle and you can still be cost effective whilst enjoying the vehicle. And if you want to, you can save that money, put it towards your next vehicle. Guys, thank you so much for watching this uh, this video. Uh, if you look through the other videos, you'll see the the um, other other bits and pieces that you may find for your, helpful for your Porsches, for your uh, Alphas, and for your Nissans. Again, thank you so much. Do subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will catch up with some more videos for you later on. Take care. All the best. I'm going to be turning this vehicle around in a few minutes, so I'd like to show you the return journey. The return journey uh, to to into Edinburgh is much, much more stunning than actually the one going out because you get to see the curve.